Hello everybody, Ted Guy Charlie here. Welcome back to the channel. So the official One UI 3.1 update or better known as Android 11 just came out for the Tab S5e. So I thought let me make a video and show you guys all of the new features that have been introduced with this update. And yes, this update does bring a ton of new features to the Galaxy Tab S5e and I'm going to show you all of these in this video. Alright, so let me start off by showing you guys widgets on the lock screen. So what you want to do is put the tablet to sleep, wake it up and if you tap on the clock, that will open up widgets on the lock screen. You've got your weather widget, you've got the music player widget, you can seek through the song, play pause buttons, digital well-being widget, next alarm and today's schedule. And you can actually reorder these by going into settings. So from over here, if you want, you can reorder the widgets. If you want music player on the top, you can do that. And if you want to switch off a particular widget, you can also do that from over here. So this is a new feature of One UI 3.1. Now you have widgets that appear on the lock screen. The second new feature they have introduced is double tap to sleep. So if you double tap on an empty area on the home screen, that will put the tablet to sleep. And we already had double tap to wake. So this is actually a new feature. Let me show you how to enable this. So drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to advanced features, open this up, then tap on motion and gestures and make sure double tap to turn off screen is enabled. So once this feature is enabled, if you double tap on an empty area on the home screen, that will put the tablet to sleep. You no longer have to press the power button to put the tablet to sleep or to wake it up. Samsung has also updated the dynamic lock screen and you have new categories. So this is the new special category. You have really, really nice high resolution wallpapers. So let's actually go into dynamic lock screen and let me show you what's new. So pinch in wallpapers. We will go into wallpaper services and we will go to dynamic lock screen settings. So number one, you can see there are a lot more categories. Previously, we only had five. Now we have 10. And one more update is that now you can select up to five categories together. Previously, you could only select one. So as you can see, we were able to choose landscapes, life, dogs, deserts, and special. So our tablet is going to shuffle wallpapers across these five different categories. I think this gives you a lot more flexibility compared to what we had before. Oh, and you see this button over here. If you tap on this, that will take you directly into the dynamic lock screen settings. So you don't even need to pinch in and go to settings. You can just directly tap on this button while you are scrolling wallpapers to change the dynamic lock screen settings. This next feature is the one that you guys have been looking forward to. So I'm going to send myself a text message onto this tablet and watch what happens to the edges. So guys, this is edge lighting on the tab S5e. So yes, edge lighting has finally made its way to the tab S5e with the One UI 3.1 update. Let me show you how you can configure this. So drop down the notification panel, go to settings, then tap on notifications. First off, you will need to make sure that this notification pop-up style is set to brief, then tap on brief pop-up settings, and finally edge lighting style. So from here, you can configure what type of edge lighting you want. And there are plenty of things that you can tweak, like you can change the color, and you also have the advanced tab where you can control the duration and the transparency. Oh, and also one very important thing that a lot of people miss out is that you should have the apps for which you want the edge lighting to work enabled in this list. Otherwise, it won't work. Also, one very important piece of information is that the edge lighting does not work when the screen is off on this tablet. So if you go to brief pop up setting, there is a feature that is missing over here. If I go to the same setting on the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, brief pop-up setting there's an option here which says show even while screen is off so that setting is missing over here so unfortunately edge lighting will not work when the screen is turned off but nonetheless this feature does work when the screen is turned on as you can see the edges of the screen light up like this one ui 3.1 also improves the way the tablet displays and handles notifications in the drop down notification panel so first off if you have a music player running you will see the music player notification over here now if you have a bluetooth headset connected you can tap on this icon and this will take you to the media page from where you can change the audio output so right now the tablet is outputting the audio on my headset because i have them connected from over here you can change the audio output to the tablet 
or back to the Bluetooth headset without actually disconnecting them. So this is another useful feature. It gives you direct shortcut if you want to change the audio output from over here. Secondly, you will also notice that the tablet now groups up notifications from the chat applications over here under conversations. So this is a nice touch. I like the fact that the tablet is grouping up notifications from the chat applications under conversations and rest of your notifications are at the bottom. And speaking of notifications, they've also added a new feature. Let's go to settings. Let's go to notifications, scroll down to advanced features. Over here, you will notice a new feature called notification history. So in case you have accidentally dismissed a notification, you can check the notification that you have dismissed from over here. Obviously, you'll need to turn this feature on first. So now I'm going to dismiss all of these notifications and we will see them in the notification history right over here. The One UI 3.1 update also brings third party device integration in the drop down notification panel. So what I'll do is drop down the notification panel and then tap on devices. And from over here, I can control my third party smart devices. So for example, I have Xiaomi smart bulbs at my home. I can turn them on and off right from over here. I don't even need to open up the app drawer and then look for Xiaomi home application. I can turn them on and off right from the drop down notification panel, tapping on devices and toggle them right from over here. So how do you add third party devices over here? Well, tap on these three dots and then tap on manage apps. Over here, you will see a list of applications that are compatible and to add devices, just tap on the app name. And from over here, you can choose the device which you want to show in the device menu. And that's it. Once you are done, those devices are going to show up in the device menu, which you can access by dropping down the notification panel. Awesome, right? They've also made some changes to the volume control panel. So now when you press the volume button, the volume control panel appears on the edge of the screen instead of top. And you can press on this button to further expand this for a more detailed view. And from over here, you can change your volume. You can change the ringtone sound. Let's mute this. You have your live caption button over here. And if you press on the gear icon, that takes you to the main volume control panel in the settings. So it's more or less the same thing. They have just repositioned it from the top of the screen onto the edges. If you take photos and record videos with the location tags option enabled, this option, your photos and videos will have the location data embedded on it. So I took this photo with the option enabled and if I swipe up, the tablet shows the location where this photo was clicked. And because I took this photo at my home, it carries my personal home address. Now location tags are great for personal use. But if you are sharing the photo onto social media websites like Facebook or Instagram, or even if you are sharing the photo with your friend, it is still going to carry over the location data with it. And actually, I can demonstrate this. I've sent the photo over to the other phone, the Galaxy Note 9. And if I swipe up, you can clearly see that the photo has my location data embedded on it. So to counter this problem and to give you more privacy, they have added a new feature in the gallery. So now when you press the share button, you will see a new option which says remove location data. And if you check this box and then share the photo, the tablet will remove the location data from the photo before sharing it onto any other smartphone, social media websites or any app on the phone. So here's the same photo, but with the option enabled. And as you can see, there is no more location data embedded onto the photo. You might have noticed the menu that pops up whenever you press the share button. Now this menu contains a list of applications and actions that you can use to share a photo, video or pretty much any file on your tablet. The thing that's new with One UI 3.1 is that now you can pin certain applications and actions to this list. On One UI 2.5, if you were to press the share button, this area shows you a list of recently used applications and actions. So this kind of keeps on refreshing. So say for example, I'm gonna share this photo on WhatsApp. I will press on the share button, but I will have to look for the app icon by scrolling all the way down over here. But with the newer version, I can have WhatsApp permanently pinned over here. So that makes it super easy to share photos, videos, or pretty much any file on the tablet. So how do you pin an application or an action to this list? Well, it is very easy. Long press and then select pin. And now the app icon or an action will be permanently pinned over here to this list. And that makes it super easy because it is right there on the top.
The gallery app has also seen a complete redesign, so you no longer have the pictures, albums, stories and saved at the bottom of the screen. You will have to tap on these three dots to reveal the menu. So over here you have the pictures, album, stories. So everything is now at the side of the screen and you can press on this button to expand and see what all folders you have in the gallery. I honestly think that this is a much better view compared to what we had before. And secondly, you'll notice that the animations have also changed. The new animation feels nice and smooth. Also another thing, when you tap on a photo or a video, the tablet will show you a film strip view at the bottom of the screen. So you can do this and shuffle through all your photos and videos like this. Oh, and speaking of videos, they kind of start playing automatically. But if you want to enable the sound, you'll need to press on this button and that enables the sound. And you will see the video playing back in the film strip view at the bottom of the screen. Tap on this and you can see through the video just like this. So the gallery has seen plenty of improvements. I really like this new gallery. It's a lot more intuitive than what we had before. But one of the best features they have added to the gallery is that now you can revert a photo back to its original form that you have edited using the built-in image editor. So this is a photo that I've edited. I can go back into the image editor and then press on the revert button and that will revert the photo back to its original form and I can save this and bam, there you go. They've also made another change in the image editor. So what I'm going to do is open up a photo in the built-in image editor by pressing on the pencil icon. So what we are going to do is crop this image. Let's apply the warm filter, kind of looks nice. So what I'm going to do now is save the picture. And you might have noticed that the tablet did not create a separate copy. It has edited the photo and saved it as original. Previously, if you were to save a photo, the image editor would create a separate copy. Okay, so now if you want a separate copy of your photo, what you can do is press on these three dots and then select save copy. That will create a separate copy of your edited photo, leaving the original photo intact. So this is the original photo. This is the photo that we have just edited. So these are two crucial changes to the built in image editor. First off, you can revert a photo back to its original form by pressing on the revert button. And secondly, if you want to save an edited copy of your photo, you will have to press on these three dots and select save copy. Otherwise, the image editor will overwrite on the existing photo. So here's the original photo. Here's the photo that we have just edited. Man, this guy is cute. Look at his paws. Another new feature that One UI 3.1 brings is that now you can add widgets directly from the application icon. So if an application supports a widget, all you have to do is long press, then tap on widgets, select a widget, and then press on add. And that will add a widget to your home screen. I honestly think this method is a lot easier compared to pinching in, then tapping on widgets, and manually searching for widgets from this list. Alright guys, now let's go to the advanced features because I want to show you something really exciting. So settings, advanced features and over here, you will see a new option, continue apps on other devices. So the concept behind this feature is that if you have another Samsung Galaxy smartphone or a tablet, what you can do is continue working on the same application that you were already working on on your tablet, but on your smartphone and vice versa. And right now only two applications are supported, Samsung Internet and Samsung Notes. But I hope to see more applications being supported in the near future. So now let me demonstrate how this feature actually works. Okay, so for example, I'm browsing a web page on my phone. Now I want to open up this exact same web page on my tablet. Usually what people will do is copy the link from the address bar and send it to the tablet via text message or through WhatsApp or any instant messaging application. But with this feature, you no longer have to do that. What you can do is open up Recents and then tap on the icon that appears over here. And the application data will synchronize between the two and the tablet will open up the exact same web page that was open on my phone. As you can see, the exact same web page has opened up. Obviously, this is in desktop view because this is a tablet. Now, this feature works both ways. So on my phone, if I go to Recents, I will see this option from your tablet and I can tap this and the phone will take me to the exact same web page that I was browsing on my tablet. So this is an awesome feature. I absolutely love this.
Now it also says over here you can copy text, images and more on this tablet and paste them onto your other devices. So that means the clipboard is also shared. Now because this feature is bi-directional, if you copy something on your phone, you should be able to paste it on the tablet. You know what? Let's give this a go. So for example, you have created something important on your phone. You want to move it to your tablet. So what I'll do is select, copy and let's open up WhatsApp. Maybe you want to send it to someone. So as you can see, we were able to paste the text that we copied on our phone onto our tablet. And you can do this the other way around. So copy text over here and I can actually paste it on my phone just like this. So this is an awesome feature. I absolutely love continue apps on other devices. And obviously for this feature to work, both devices need to have this feature. So you need at least one UI 3.1 and you will also need to have the devices connected to the same Wi-Fi network with Bluetooth turned on. So yes, Bluetooth is indeed turned on on both of these devices. And I think you will also need to be signed in into the same Samsung account. Not sure about that, but still, nonetheless, awesome feature. They've also added a couple of new features to the Samsung keyboard. So first off, whenever you type something, the keyboard will automatically suggest Bitmoji based on what you are typing. So as you can see, I've typed out Hey, and the keyboard is auto suggesting Bitmoji and I can send this over. Now for this feature to work, you will need to go into keyboard settings then tap on suggest stickers while typing and make sure Bitmoji is enabled. And obviously you will need to have the Bitmoji app downloaded on your tablet and you will need to create your very own avatar. And a lot of Snapchatters already know what Bitmoji is. So this is again a new feature. Oh, and one more thing I have noticed is that along with Bitmoji, the keyboard also suggests emoji and they appear over here. So you can just tap on them and send them over. So check this feature out guys. I'm going to type something and listen to what the tablet has to say. H E Y H H O W how A R E R Y O U U So this feature is called speak keyboard input allowed and what this feature does is that it reads out the individual alphabets and the words that you type. Let me show you how you can enable this feature. Okay, so what you want to do is go to the keyboard settings, scroll down to swipe, touch and feedback, then tap on speak keyboard input allowed and make sure to turn this feature on. Over here, you have three settings, characters, words and characters and words. I prefer the third setting because then the tablet is going to read out the characters and the words. And that's it. Once this feature is configured, the tablet is going to read out whatever you type. Subscribe. And yes, if you are enjoying the video, please subscribe. So check this out guys, this is an awesome feature. This update allows you to set a custom video or a still image as your calling screen background. So as you can see right now, I'm receiving a phone call on the tablet and a video is playing back as the calling screen background. How awesome is that? So let me show you how to do this because it's kind of awesome. Okay, so on your tablet, open up the phone application, then tap on these three dots and then go to settings. Over here, tap on call background. On this screen, you will get two options, layout and background. So if you want, you can also change the layout. So this is the second layout. But since we want to change the background, I will tap on the background button and then press on the plus icon. Now from over here, pick a video or a photo from your gallery. I'll pick this video for demonstration purposes. Now it says here video too long and large. Tap this icon to trim the video down to less than 15 seconds. So we will tap on this icon and trim the video. And once you are done, press the done button. Wait for the tablet to trim the video. And finally, the tablet will give you a preview of what you are going to see. You also have the option of using the video sound as your ringtone. So if you want to use the video sound as the ringtone, you can enable this option. And then finally, set as call background. So now, whenever you receive an incoming call, you will see the video that you have just set as your calling screen background. And you can also hear that the video sound is playing back as the ringtone. How awesome is that? Or if you have set a still image, you will see the still image as your calling screen background. 
and you will also see the custom video background or the still image whenever you make a phone call. So right now I'm making a phone call from this tablet and you can see our video is playing back. So this is an awesome feature of One UI 3.1. I think many of you guys are gonna love this. The built-in Samsung Notes application has also seen a substantial update. So this is now the same application that you get with flagship phones like the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So that's awesome. So the thing is, there are plenty of new features available, starting with the ability to highlight and annotate your notes. So we will go into editing mode by tapping on that button. So first off, now you can highlight your notes. Press on this button and then select the highlighter from over here. Pick the color and change the thickness from here. I prefer the yellow color, kind of looks nice. So this will allow you to highlight your text. Next up is annotation. Select the pen. Again, pick your color and pick a different type of pen if you would like. Let's select the blue color and this will allow you to annotate your notes. Awesome, right? The thing is, these features were supposed to arrive with One UI 2.5 just like they did on these phones, but Samsung decided to skip and include them with One UI 3.1, but nonetheless, they finally did. Okay, so you might have noticed we aren't able to scroll that's because it's in editing mode. So to enter into reading mode, press on this and that will make the application enter into reading mode. And now you will be able to scroll without leaving those lines on the screen. So that's the reading mode. And if you press on this button, that will give you an overview of all of the pages in your current note. This update also allows you to change the background color of the notes. So tap on these three dots and then select background color and pick a different color from over here. I do prefer the yellowish color. You can also pick a deeper yellow if you wish to, but I kind of prefer this one and then press on done. And in addition to the colors, you can also change the page template. So once again, press on these three dots and then select page template. And from over here, you can pick a different page template. I like this one. Let's try another page template. This one seems kind of nice. So you can also choose this kind of a page template. Although I would suggest you to pick a page template before you start creating your notes. Otherwise this thing will happen. So I'm really happy to see Samsung has added all of these new note features to the Galaxy Tab S5e. So let's go back here. Oh, and they've also added folders. So if you press on these three dots, you will see folders button over here. So this gives you an overview of the folders. And if you tap on manage folders from over here, you can create a new folder and you can just drag and drop your notes into different folders just like that. So this makes managing notes a lot easier. You can also now import PDF file. So you'll see this PDF button over here, press on this and just choose a PDF file from your storage. And as you can see, this allows you to import a PDF file. I think this is a user manual of the TV that I've got. So the thing is, once you have imported a PDF file, you can actually go ahead and sign the PDF. So tap on this button again, pick a pen, and this will allow you to sign the PDF. So this makes it super easy to sign PDF files. Awesome, right? You can also pick the highlighter and start highlighting stuff. So you also have that functionality. So yes, this is the brand new updated Samsung Notes app. Now, if you don't have the latest version on here, I would suggest you to open up the Galaxy Store, which should be inside the Samsung folder, then press on these three lines and then select updates and manually update the Samsung Notes application from over here. But I did not update the Samsung Notes application. This one came updated with the One UI 3.1 update. Oh, and this is something that you guys will love. Samsung has brought back screen on time since last full charge. So drop down the notification panel and settings. Now inside settings, we will go into battery and device here, then tap on battery. And if you tap over here, that will take you to this page, which says since last full charge and the tablet will show you the screen on time. So previously we only had last seven days. So you would get this sort of a view. So now they have brought back since last full charge. So this is awesome. This gives you an overview of whatever apps that you have been using. Now let's go back here and you have all your other settings over here. So if you go into more battery settings, you have protect battery, which limits the maximum charge to 85%, fast charging on and off, show charging information, show battery percentage, and finally the adaptive battery option is also there. 
They've also tweaked the power saving modes. So if I tap over here, this is how the new power saving mode feature looks like. Now you can also access this by dropping down the notification panel and long pressing over here. That will also take you to the same screen. Now just for a comparison, this is how the power modes used to look like on One UI 2.5. I don't think the tablet had high performance mode, although I might be wrong, but all three power modes are available on One UI 3.1. They have just been relocated and renamed. So let me explain how it works now versus how it used to on One UI 2.5. Okay, so when the power saving mode is off on One UI 3.1, the tablet will be in optimized mode. When you switch on the power saving mode, the tablet will go into medium power saving just like it does on One UI 2.5. So when you turn it on, the CPU speed will be limited to 70%. The brightness will also decrease by 10%. So this is medium power savings. And finally, the third option that you see over here, limit apps and home screen. This is actually your maximum power saving mode. So once you enable this, the tablet will go into maximum power saving mode, just like it used to on One UI 2.5. So if I activate this, and activate power saving mode with limit apps and home screen, you will see that it is actually the exact same thing. And also notice how fast it switches on One UI 3 versus 2.5. It's almost instantaneous on One UI 3. So this one is still switching, this one is already done. So as you can see, it is the exact same thing. So all of the features are actually available on One UI 3. They have just been renamed and relocated. They've also added Recycle Bin to the File Manager and the Text Messaging application. So first off, let's go to the File Manager. We'll go to My Files. So if you happen to delete any file from over here, it will go into the Recycle Bin rather than getting deleted permanently. And you can go into the Recycle Bin and restore the file from over here or choose to empty it. I'm gonna restore the file. And the same option has been added into the text messaging application. So if you delete anything over here, it will go into the recycle bin rather than getting deleted permanently. And you can go to the recycle bin and you can choose to delete these messages or to restore them. And by the way, if you leave them in the recycle bin, they will get permanently deleted after 30 days. So this is an awesome feature. If you have deleted messages accidentally, you can easily restore them. And couple of small cosmetic changes here and there. For example, on the lock screen, when you get the number pad, you can choose to reposition this. You can have it in the middle or to the right side or to the left side. So that kind of makes it easier to operate the tablet with one hand. So that is a really, really nice touch. And also let's launch the camera because I want to show you something. If you go into the video mode, you can now change the resolution and the frame rate right from the camera's viewfinder. Previously, you had to go into settings and change the video resolution from over here. So you no longer need to open up the settings. You can do it directly from over here. So guys, we are almost at the end of the video and I know someone's gonna ask me how is the performance like after the update? Well, to be very honest, the performance is pretty okay. So what I'm gonna do now is open up different applications and show you how the tablet performs. So in the web browser, the tablet does quite okay. Everything is nice and smooth. Uh, web pages load up quite quickly and there is absolutely no lag when it comes to zooming in and zooming out and the pages also scroll quite smoothly. So web browsing is just fine on the tablet, although you do have to keep in mind this tablet has a processor that is from the year 2019. And even in 2019, the Snapdragon 670 that is inside the tablet was not the fastest CPU of its time. It was a mid-range CPU. And considering the amount of money I paid for this tablet, I would say that this tablet has been more than worth it. So what I'm gonna do now is open up a few applications and after that we'll wrap the video up. Let's open up camera, let's take a picture. Okay, no problems. And let's open up Instagram. It does take a little time to open up Instagram, but that's okay. By the way, this is the 64 gig variant. That means it has four gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, four gigabytes of RAM in 2021. Yeah, that's a bit low. But yeah, the tablet does okay. I mean, look at Instagram, absolutely no lags at all. And if you guys are having any issues with your tablet, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try and sort it out for you guys.
let's reopen the web browser let's go home so yeah looks like the tablet is doing perfectly fine i'm guessing i'll wrap the video up over here so yeah guys thank you for watching this video and if you have enjoyed the video please do subscribe to the channel it does help out a lot i do have a dedicated playlist when it comes to the tab s5v so here it is so guys do subscribe and do follow me on my social media accounts i'll put all the links in the video description so thank you for watching if you do have any questions leave them in the comment section down below and i'll try and answer them so thanks for watching stay tuned for more videos and i'll see you guys next time